fire in Ishpeming. Obama chooses new top aide. I'm Hannah Schutzkis. And I'm Dan Campanen, and this is your Public Eye News. It was a tense situation this morning for emergency personnel in Marquette. The Marquette Police Department responded to the 2300 block of Presque Isle Avenue at approximately 4.18 a.m. where a suicide man, suicidal man allegedly discharged a firearm inside of his home. Police learned that the man's girlfriend had left the residence prior to their arrest, to their arrival. The man initially refused to communicate with officers, but after several phone calls by police, the man was convinced to surrender at 9.38 a.m. He was then transported to the UP Health System Marquette for evaluation. Early this morning in Ishpeming, a home was damaged by fire. Ishpeming Volunteer Fire Department firefighters say they were called out to a structure fire at 640 Murray Street shortly before 2 a.m. They entered the home to find the fire contained to an upstairs bedroom with the rest of the home suffering moderate smoke and fire water damage. Homeowners Matthew and Sarah Rich, their adult son and their 10-year-old child were home at the time of the blaze. No injuries were reported and the fire is still under investigation and is believed to be electrical in nature. Two suspects were arrested Saturday after Ishpeming City Police found meth components on their property. Police also found meth in a vehicle on the property and two HCL generators. 39-year-old Bradley Helston and 51-year-old Gerald Humphreys Jr. were taken into custody along with a female who is being taken in for being drunk and disorderly. The two have been charged with conspiracy to commit controlled substance delivery, controlled substance manufacture, and maintaining a meth lab. Their bond is set at $50,000 on each count. Elsewhere in Ishpeming, school superintendent John Summerhill hosted a workshop last night to discuss the district's mission and vision. Attendees included board members, faculty, and members of the community. The workshop also discussed the importance of student involvement. A Gwen woman has been arrested following an investigation into an alleged theft of over $10,000 from an elderly couple. The accused, 20-year-old Jolene Marvey Johnson, was arrested on one count felony warrant of larceny of more than $1,000 but less than $20,000. Johnson was employed by the couple and had been working in their home for a couple of days a week over the past month. The theft was reported on March 16th when the couple discovered money missing from different locations around the home. Johnson was released on 10% bond and is set to have a preliminary hearing on April 6th in Marquette County District Court. The Michigan Department of Corrections plans to reopen the Hiawatha Correctional Facility in Eastern Upper Peninsula amid security upgrades throughout the prison system. The department determined it was less expensive to upgrade security at the Hiawatha Correctional Facility, which closed in 2009, than to make similar changes at the Kinross facility nearby. The department says the Kinross facility will be deactivated and the Hiawatha facility will be renamed to keep the Kinross name. The change will likely occur in October of this year. And stay tuned because after the break we'll have your national and international news. Next time on Nature, Ireland has one wild river that divides it in two. For one year, this native son will make the Shannon his home. I want to find the hidden places and the creatures living there. But those creatures may be vanishing. We live in a country that's undergoing rapid change. Animals aren't good at adapting to fast change. Wednesday evening at 8 o'clock Eastern. Welcome back. A German wings flight destined to land in Dusseldorf, Germany has crashed in southern France early this morning. The plane lost radio contact with air traffic control and began to descend very quickly. The crew did not issue a, a distress call at any time and the captain had been flying for German wings for more than 10 years. Over 200 of France's national police are at the site of the crash and another 350 are on the way. It could take hours for emergency services to reach the site due to the mountainous terrain. The French president announced of the 144 passengers and six crew members, they are not expecting survivors. President Barack Obama has chosen Vice President Joe Biden's top aide, Shaley Murray, to replace Dan Pfeiffer, the president's aide who left earlier this month. Obama made a statement that he has relied on her advice for years and that she will work on multiple issues and special projects. Murray is currently Biden's communications director and his chief of staff. The president has also selected J Jason Goodman, a former employee of Google and Twitter, to become the new White House chief digital officer. The White House has announced it its plans to keep the current amount of troops in Afghanistan rather than cutting the number in half as was planned. 
The announcement was made after the Afghan president, Asraf Ghani, asked the U.S. to reconsider. And Obama acknowledged that as long as troops were in the region, quote, they would face risks in a dangerous place, end quote. This meeting shows a definite shift in the relationship between the U.S. and Afghanistan since Ghani took office. In spite of the harsh measures the Nigerian government has put into place to punish human traffickers, by the government's own admission, 8 million people are currently engaged in forced labor. The Global Slavery Index says Nigeria has the highest number of people in modern slavery of any sub-Saharan nation. Paradoxically, the group also rates Nigeria's anti-trafficking agency, NAPTIP, as one of the strongest government responses on the continent. But it is clearly overwhelmed in the realities of working in what is now a zone of military operations, Nigeria's north. As insecurity in the region has spiraled, the worry has been that children would fall through the cracks, and as Boko Haram increases its reliance on child suicide bombers, concerns are growing that orphaned children could end up in the hands of the terror group. The North Korean ambassador in Bangladesh issued an apology after one of the, of one of the embassy's diplomats was caught carrying 27 kilograms or 59 pounds of undeclared gold into the country's main airport in Dhaka. North Korean officials could not be reached for comment. Meanwhile, state media in the largely isolated communist country has not yet reported on the incident. According to top customs official Kazi Muhammad Zadin, the gold was discovered on the afternoon of the 5th after Sun Young Nam, the first secretary of North Korea's Dhaka embassy, arrived on the Singapore Airlines flight. After a while, officials opened the bag and found the undeclared goods that included 170 gold bars and gold ornaments. At current market price, the gold would be worth $1 million. Grieving women carried the coffin of their fallen friend high on their shoulders in scenes many said they had never witnessed before in the Afghan capital. Just days earlier, a mob of male attackers beat and kicked 27-year-old Farkunda before tossing her off a bridge, setting her on fire, and throwing her in a river. Early reports suggest that she was a religion teacher who taught the Quran to children. In a tearful interview, her father said there was no way his daughter would burn pages of the holy book, which has been cited as the motive for the horrific attack. 26 people have been arrested in connection with the brutal killing. Afghanistan's interior minister, Narul Haq Ulani, said Monday in a statement before parliament, 13 police officers were also suspended in connection to the case. Farkuda's father said those guilty of killing her daughter should face justice, saying, quote, I don't want her to die in vain, end quote. Actress Angelina Jolie has announced that she has had surgery to remove her ovaries and fallopian tubes to cut her cancer risk. Jolie said she has been planning the surgery for some time, but a recent blood test showed results that made her finalize her decision. Further tests came back negative for any tumors. She will now not be able to have any more children, but said she was lucky because she already has a family. And singer-songwriter David Crosby accidentally hit a jogger with his car over the weekend in California near his house. According to a spokesperson for Got Crosby, the jogger and the singer were on the same side of the road. Pedestrians and joggers are supposed to be on the left side of the road walking towards traffic. The jogger suffered multiple fractures and was airlifted to a nearby hospital, but his injuries are not life-threatening. And after the break, we'll have your weather and sports. Stay tuned. This is priceless evidence. It was a tiny scroll. I immediately saw very distinct letters. We can actually see vivid evidence here of a destruction. There is no word for history in the Hebrew Bible. The biblical writers were good historians, but their objective was always something far beyond that. And here we have the biblical passage as it shows up in archaeology. Wednesday evening at 9. Welcome back to Public Eye News. My name's Dane Wormlinger with your local weather. Look at that sunny sky behind me. Great weather we're having, but tonight the forecast is calling for a bit of snow into the morning. Right now in Marquette, it's about 32 degrees with winds at the east-southeast at 9 miles per hour and pressure at 30.38 falling. And tonight, snowy skies with a low of 26 degrees with winds east at 8 miles per hour. And looking into tomorrow, snowy conditions with a high of 45 degrees with winds west at 13 miles per hour. And looking around the UP right now in Sault Ste. Marie, it's 28 degrees with sunny skies. In Manistique, it's 32 with sunny skies. In Escanaba, 34. And in Menominee, 36. In Iron Mountain, it's 37 degrees with sunny skies. Ironwood is at 30, or 41 degrees with sunny skies. And Houghton is at 36 degrees with sunny skies. And back here in Marquette, it's 32 degrees with sunny skies. Let's take a look at your week ahead. 
On Thursday, you can expect a high of 23 degrees, a low of 6 degrees with snowy skies. On Friday, a high of 19 degrees, a low of 9 degrees with partly cloudy skies. And on Saturday, a high of 35 degrees, a low of 26 degrees, and sunny skies. Well, Floyd, the weather is supposed to be cooling down, but I heard the Pistons are going to be heating up soon. That's right. They're looking to get three wins in a row. The Detroit Pistons are all set to take on the Toronto Raptors at the Palace of Auburn Hills. The Pistons currently hold a record of 26 wins and 44 losses and are trying to string together three wins in a row. The Pistons defeated the Chicago Bulls 107-91 on Saturday and then defeated the Boston Celtics 105-97 on Sunday. The Pistons will have their hands full against the Raptors team that holds the third seat in the Eastern Conference and is looking to win back-to-back -back division titles. Toronto has a record of 42-28 and, and can secure the division crown with a win over the Pistons. The Pistons are no longer in playoff contention but have continued to play well since the addition of point guard Reggie Jackson, who leads the team in assists per game at 8.3. The matchup is set for tonight at 7.30. In other Detroit sports, the Red Wings will take on the Arizona Coyotes tonight. The Wings are looking to win back-to-back -back games for the first time in almost three weeks. Their last win came on Sunday against the St. Louis Blues in an overtime struggle that ended 2-1. The Wings hold a record of 39 wins, 21 losses, and 11 ties, and hold third place in the Atlantic Division, while the Coyotes are currently struggling with a record of 21 wins, 44 losses, and 8 ties. Despite the Wings' winning record, they have only won three of their last nine games, but is hoping to hand the Coyotes their ninth loss in a row. The puck will drop at 7.30 p.m. at Joe Louis Arena. The Detroit Tigers will take on the New York Yankees tonight in Steinbrenner Field in Tampa, Florida. The Tigers are trying to bounce back from a 5-3 loss to the Atlanta Braves on Sunday. The Yankees are also trying to bounce back from a close loss handed to them by the Washington Nationals 7-6. The Tigers are leading the league in batting average and come in second in runs, on-base percentage, and slugging percentage, but are struggling with a record of 7-14. The first pitch is set for 7 p.m. Detroit Lions quarterback Matthew Stafford will be getting hitched in less than two weeks. The star quarterback and his wife Kelly Hall have already had their bachelor and bachelorette parties, and now the gifts are rolling in. Lions tight end Eric Ebron, a self-proclaimed sneakerhead, decided to buy the couple a matching pair of Jordan sneakers. The shoes are customized with the couple's wedding date labeled on the side, and the groom's shoes Jordan, Jordan symbol is holding a wedding ring and a, wearing a suit, and the bride's shoes symbol is holding a bouquet and wearing a dress. Hall later posted a picture of the sneakers on Instagram with a caption that read, quote, Shout out to Eric Ebron for giving us the coolest wedding gift. You know us too well, end quote. Save the date, the Stafford Hall wedding is set for April 4th. So Hannah, I hear New York is having a charity event. Yep, and it's quite a unique event as well. New York is preparing for the World Trade Center stair climb. The benefit will be held at One World Trade Center, and participants will be climbing 180 flights of stairs to get to the 90th floor. The event is raising money for wounded veterans and to help educate children who've lost a parent in war. Astronaut Scott Kelly is planning a year-long trip to space. A retired Navy captain, Kelly has previously spent five months on a space station just a few years ago. When asked what he's packing for the trip, he said he's taking a belt to keep his shirt tails from floating out of his pants, joking that it will be his superhero utility belt. You know, a year is a long time, but I'm sure since he's, he's been there for five months, he's probably used to it by now. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. But, you know, you might get pretty lonely, you know, who are you going to have to talk to up there? That's right. And 90 flights of stairs. Could you guys do that? Nope. I don't think so. <laughs> I, am, I am very out of shape to do 90 flights of stairs. <laughs> it would definitely be hard, but <laughs> yeah. it's for a good cause. So. Indeed. Yeah, that is true. That's all we have here for you at Public Eye News. Join us again tomorrow. The preceding program was produced in studios located in the Edgar L. Hardin Learning Resources Center by WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television.